Well, welcome you guys. This is our uh, last one of the semester, and uh, you guys have been so, so faithful to just uh, come as often as you can to these luncheons, and our prayer is that it's been a, a blessing to you, and that it will continue to be a blessing to you as you continue to remember and think about and pray about the things that we learn here. And I know I certainly do, and uh, I was thinking about some of these things. A couple of weeks ago, I was with my son Jason, and we were watching our beloved Ohio State Buckeyes. I'm going to get a picture up here for you, just in case you don't know about them. So let me get out of this. There we go. Wonderful place to spend a Saturday afternoon, I'll tell you. It's called the Horseshoe. And uh, so we were watching the Ohio State Buckeyes, and this was a couple weeks ago because our Buckeyes uh, had a bye last Saturday, and uh, they are 10-0, and 0, as, as some of you probably know. Not bowl eligible, but uh, they are 10-0 and 0 still. And uh, so last Saturday I was watching the uh, Alabama game, and uh, who did Alabama play last Saturday? A and M, right? And I think A and M won that game, didn't they? Yes. That's right. They did win that game. It's a shameless attempt on my part to get the approval of all the Aggies in the uh, audience and let you guys whoop it up a little bit. Beat the number one team in the country. That was that was a very exciting game. So anyway, this was a couple weeks ago, and we were watching the Buckeyes and. Um, we were wading through all of the commercials that are on every game. And this is something that, I don't know about you, but it just really bugs me when I have to go through three minutes of commercials to watch 30 seconds of football. And they do it over and over and over again. And they're not commercials that you'd want to watch. You know, it's always about impotence and incontinence and indigestion and beer. You know, it's always got lots of beer commercials in the football games. But I was complaining about this, and you know, I think Jason was getting kind of tired of it. And uh, so he turns to me, he says, Dad, do you ever hear of uh, first world problems? <laughs> I said, no, no, I haven't. So he reaches in his pocket and pulls out his smartphone. And he pulls up YouTube, and he, uh, he says, here, watch this while, you're, uh, while the commercials are on. And so he played me this video, and I want to share it with you guys. I hate when my phone charger won't reach my bed. I hate when my little seats aren't hidden. When I go to the bathroom and I forget my phone. Let me tell you that you're machine out of there, you come to say something. I hate it when my house is so big, I need two wireless waters. When my makeup makes my hot water taste too cold. When I have to write my name, check what I forget on last name. I hate it when I tell the two pickles and they still give me pickles. So that was a um, that was a video from a group that was the uh, that's called the Gift of Water. I believe that's somewhere in Africa. And um, so anyway, uh, how does it make you feel when you see something like that? Probably a little bit like it made me feel. You feel a little bit maybe uh, self-conscious or maybe even a little embarrassed about the things that you have complained about this week or maybe today, or maybe five minutes ago. Uh, we all have these things that they call first world problems that consume a tremendous amount of our time and our attention and our energy every single day. And um, so we, we all have them. Uh, we all think about them when we see something like this. And uh, on the lighter side, there is a video that has the top 100 first world problems by a guy named Scooter Magruder. And uh, if you're anything like me, you'll recognize a lot of these immediately. So we'll go back to that. 
All right, sometimes YouTube has some not so great pictures up there. I think I can get to it pretty easy. Yeah. What's up guys, hope you're doing well. So today we'll be talking about first world problems, more specifically a top 100 list. Now for those of you who don't know what first world problems are, just watch the video. They're problems typically experienced by people living in industrialized and wealthy countries. No hogamos juegos? Throw me the alley. Top 100 first world problems. Can't find the remote. Uh -huh. Twitter is over capacity. Ran out of toilet paper. You don't have to eat at your house. Your neighbor blocked their Wi-Fi. Ran out of milk. Really? Your hot water takes a while to get hot. You don't have an automatic toothbrush. You don't want to eat leftovers. You don't have anything to eat. Too many commercials on TV. Twilight movies. Nick and Dodge. Justin Bieber. Teen Mom. You could be something. Instagram was off with the iPhone. The barber matched your edge up. You were forced to get Facebook time off. Your boss requested to add you on Facebook. People won't follow you on Twitter. Annoying group text. The DVR recorded the wrong show. Toddlers and TR. Yeah. Child movies, no Facebook. Back cell phone hey, yeah. so, Hello? Too many Facebook event devices. You have to use two remote controls. You have an annoying lock box. You don't own a Mac. You forgot to turn your phone on time before you went to sleep. Lock won't wake you up. You can't use a TV with a vacuum cleaner. You don't know how to work a Mac. You left your cell phone at home. You can't find your chapstick. You have to pay a transaction fee. They only accept no, credit. No, they don't have to make grave. They only accept credit. Sorry. You can't tell how much gas costs. Gas costs man. They min min. Don't serve Coca Cola products. Snoopy. The situation. Sarah Palin. Justin Bieber. New Bieber. Taco Bell is tripping. And the chicken? Oh, and the flatbread? Yeah. No, we don't carry the flatbread anymore. Dang. <laughs> you want to tap, but you keep getting green lights. The car gets 12 miles per gallon. No parking anywhere. You guys don't have coke? They want to serve Pepsi, bro. You pay $5 for coffee, and it tastes bad. Elevator is broken. Burger's is taking too long in the bathroom. Talk about you guys don't deliver? Okay. You have to have You spent more than $5 for a separate supper. You forgot to put deodorant on. You both have a long time to die. Raw food order. I wanted the chicken nugget. Your mom requested to be on Facebook. <laughs> there are no fries. You forgot the test was tomorrow. You can't find the match to your side. Ball cap for your start. Just a paper. Just a paper. Football season's over. You start out the lights, man. You lose to a viral team. Did we just lose to FSU? Xbox Live is sucking. This is not an acceptable word. Your laptop died. You didn't get what you wanted for Christmas. You can't find the shark. Your phone keeps auto correcting. Your friend has an annoying dream job. <laughs> really? You got destroyed in fantasy basketball. You got destroyed in fantasy baseball. You got destroyed in all fantasy sports. You still don't know how to use a Mac. Oh, Jeremy Lin! Show the replay. Your TV Show the replay. Mind. Show the replay. There's nothing on TV. No internet service. Your computer got a virus. The microwave beep until it's open. No money for your tax return. Traffic. Low cell phone battery. Justin Bieber. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Chick-fil-A is closed on Sunday. <laughs> so did you guys see yourself in there a couple times? Yes. <laughs> so I get back to, yeah, that's where I want to be. So I have a few more, actually. You probably have a few more even on top of the, the top 100. One of my first world problems is... A lot of them actually are when I'm out driving around. Uh, it's when we come down the frontage road and we come to those really nice U-turns that you have. We don't have those in Ohio, but those really nice U-turns where you get on the other side of the highway real easy and you come all the way around the U-turn and you come up to that yield sign and you got about 150 yards of merge lane in front of you and people come to a complete stop. Boom! Right, right there at the yield sign. And so I'm the guy that's behind you banging my head on the headrest saying, you don't have to stop here. Keep going, keep moving, merge in. That's one of my first world problems that's not really a problem. The other one is standing in line at the store and people who take 15 minutes to pay for whatever they're buying when they get up to the cash register. This happens to me virtually every single time. I go to HEB, I go to Walmart, doesn't matter what store it is, 
They get in the line, the people are up there, they're getting ready to pay. They don't even start looking for their wallet or their purse or whatever until they get the final total and then they're like surprised, you know, when they have to actually pay for this. So they root around in their purse or their wallet and they get their cards out and they swipe the card through the machine and then they stand it. And nothing happens. <laughs> and so the, the cashier looks at it, he says, uh, we'll swipe it again. So they swipe the card again, they look at it. <laughs> nothing happens. This happens to me all the time. <laughs> so the cashier says, well, let me try and swipe it. So the cashier takes it, swipes the card through the, through the machine, and nothing happens. And then they start having a conversation about why the card doesn't work. They start talking to the cashier, saying, I don't know why this card hasn't worked. It's always worked before. I don't. And then they start talking to their spouse. Harold, do you know why this card won't work? I, it's always worked before. Do you have any idea? I want to step out of the line and say, I will pay for the groceries myself if it will get you to move out of the line. So this is one of my, another one of my first world problems. So, these are, these are what's called first world problems. These are things that are really very insignificant, but again, it can, they consume a tremendous amount of our time and our, our energy and our attention every day. And the reason that this video was so funny to you all is because you do the same thing, right? <laughs> now, what I'm not talking about today is I'm not talking about the real problems that most of us experience from time to time the really significant problems that happen to us in life. And, and those are big issues. Those are not things that we can dismiss lightly. And, uh, and those are difficult times. What I'm talking about is these so-called first world problems, which are things that really, in the long run, in the greater scheme of things, have no significance at all, but again, consume a tremendous amount of our time and our attention and our energy. So, what do we do about first world problems? Well. The first video that we watched on the gift of water mentioned donating at the end, and uh, other videos talk about how you should just get over it, get over first world problems, suck it up. Uh, I don't find that to be as helpful as a couple of other things that I want to share with you guys today uh, about what I call the cure for first world problems. So the first thing that I want to talk about as far as a cure for first world problems is simply to realize that first world problems are not problems. They're really not. They are insignificant. And if you can get into the habit of, of reminding yourself of that and training yourself to think that way, then when you get stuck behind the line and somebody that's slow in the store, or you get stuck at the U-turn because somebody stopped at the yield sign, you won't have to do like I do and bang your head on the headrest. You can remind yourself that this is a first world problem and that these are really not problems. Now about uh, three or four weeks ago, I got my first smartphone. <laughs> I love my smartphone. It's the iPhone 4S and you can talk to it. I had no idea that these things were out there, but I, I got the iPhone 4S and you can talk to it. So I talked to the, the lady in my smartphone. Her name is Siri. And, uh, and I can ask Siri to do virtually anything. I don't have to type anything into my phone. So when I want to send my wife a text, I just pick up my phone, and I unlock it, and I hold this down, and it clicks, and I say, send text to Shelly. I might have messed it up. Here's your message to Shelly. I was talking too much. Hold on. <laughs> Send text to Shelly. Okay, I can send a text to Shelly for you. What would you like it to say? On my way, period. I updated your message. Ready to send it? Read message to me. Your message to Shelly says, on my way, would you like to send, cancel, review, or change it? Cancel it. <laughs> okay, I will send it. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I don't have to type anything into this. Now, Siri and I have become very close over the last month, and uh, I, I've told my wife, 
couple of times I said, you know, honey, I would never have an affair. But Siri is really tempting me. <laughs> and, uh, and Siri is nearly perfect, but not always perfect. And uh, the other day, I was trying to uh, tell her the text that I wanted her to send. And I was enunciating as clearly as a man from southwestern Ohio can enunciate. And she got it wrong every time. She got it wrong like four times or five times. And I was starting to get really upset about this. And said, Siri, you're, you're really ticking me off. And then I stopped and I thought, first world problem. <laughs> not a problem. Really not. And you know what? I felt better immediately when I realized that. When I stopped myself from kind of going into that cycle of uh, thinking, you know, that this was, you know, a very upsetting thing to realizing that it's not. So that's the first thing for me. And when I forget to remind myself that it's just a first world problem and it's not a problem, my wife reminds me now because I've told her about all these things. And then when she does it, then I get to remind her. So it's kind of funny, you know, it goes, goes both ways. But you need to remember that first world problems really are not problems. And the way that you remember that, a very good way that, that sort of lays the foundation for this whole thing to remember is this. We need to renew and we need to set our minds. Now set our minds on what? Well, we need to set our minds as believers. We can set our minds on the Word of God, on what the Bible calls the things above and not on earthly things. So the more that we renew our minds in Scripture, the more that we uh, are exposed to times of prayer, times of worship, like when you come here, when you come into the noon luncheon, and you got all these things going on out there, right? And a lot of them are first world problems, right? And so you come in here to the noon luncheon, and you grab your food and get through the line and find your seat up there and you sit down and somebody comes up to the front and they say uh, let's bow our heads and uh, let's all pray together and you close your eyes and you bow your head and you pray and how you feel you feel better don't you doesn't matter so much what they're praying about but you feel better you feel peace and for a moment all those things that are out there, all those earthly things that are out there, start to fade away. Mm -hmm. There's an old chorus that we used to sing all the time. I don't know if you guys sing it anymore, but it's called, Turn Your Eyes on Jesus. And the chorus says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And I love that line, the things of earth grow strangely dim. They're still there. We still got to deal with all this stuff when we get up and go back out. <coughs> but for a moment, for the time that we are focused on the things above, those things, those first world problems that we struggle with so many times do grow strangely dim. A couple of scriptures. Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15 says, Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault, in a crooked and depraved generation. So how are you guys doing with that? Do everything without complaining or arguing. Um, why is complaining so bad? Why is arguing so bad? Well, for one thing, it's, it's contagious, you know? When one person starts to complain, and then you start to complain, and then you're, you know, it doesn't really matter what you're complaining about, but it's kind of contagious. Uh, and that is not when we're setting our mind on the things above. That's when we're setting our mind usually on earthly things. And so uh, I, even, I even heard one time, uh, speaking of complaining, this was a couple years ago, and I, I have no idea who the student even was. But uh, I was told that there was a student that was overheard in the noon luncheon who came in and was talking about the food and said, you know, the food really isn't that good. And it sure would be nice if they had some healthier options once in a while. Man, it just kind of stung when I heard that, when I thought about all of, the, all of the ladies, the dozens of ladies who work so hard to prepare all that food for that particular day. But haven't we all done that? I mean, I've done that. And when other people overhear that, 
whether they're Christians or non-Christians, especially if they're not Christians, and, you know, how attracted are they going to be to our faith? You know, how much are they going to want to say, gee, I, I really want to become a Christian so I can, I can be like that? It's, I don't think so. So, do everything, the scripture says, without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. Be transformed. Don't be conformed to the image of this world. And we're being conformed to the image of this world all the time. Everything that comes to us through our computers, through our television sets, through being out there just interacting with the rest of the world, the things of the world are around us all the time, we're immersed in them, and they, they stick to us. And if we're not careful, we can be conformed to the image of this world. We become just like everybody else. And the scripture says, don't be conformed, be transformed by what? By the renewing of your mind. So this renewing of the mind is something that we have to do. Now how do we do that? Talked about it a minute ago, Colossians 3 verses 1 and 2 says, since then you have been raised with Christ, Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God, set your mind on things above and not on earthly things. Set your minds. That's the, that's the phrase that really sticks with me. To be able to set my mind. I don't know about you, but I have to do this every day. I have to do it usually first thing in the morning, because if I'm off and running, then I don't, don't really come back to a time when I can really get focused on the scripture, even if it's for five minutes, and, and just sit down and have a moment to pray and have a moment to read a verse or two of scripture and really reset, renew the mind. This is what we have to do in order to be able to combat these first world problems. It's what we need to do in order to be able to do all things without arguing and complaining. We need to renew our minds. This reminded me, I don't know why, of... Um, the old television sets. Now, I was I was born in 1959. I'll give you just a second to do the math. <laughs> so I'm 53 years old. And I was born in 1959. And in the 60s, we had TVs that looked like this. And these, how many of you remember these TVs? And would be brave enough to admit it. There you go. <laughs> all right. So remember how on these TVs you had uh, all these dials on the front or on the back of the TV, and two of the dials were the vertical hold and the horizontal hold. Do you remember that? Because in those days the TV would start jumping around like this and looping, and it was impossible to watch whatever was on there as it was doing that jumping around. So you had to get up. You actually had to get up and go over to the TV, which you don't have to do now. If you wanted to change the channel, if you wanted to change the settings, you had to, had to go to the TV. And you would adjust the horizontal hold and you adjust the vertical hold and try to get the, the picture to be still so that you could watch it, right? And then if it didn't work, still, after adjusting everything, you couldn't get to stop, what would you do? You hit it, right, you just smack that TV right on the side, and a lot of times, did it work? Yes. It did. I have never had anyone be able to explain to me why that happens, why a sophisticated piece of electronics would work better because you hit it on the side, but it does. It did. And, uh, and so anyway, I think that's, that's something like what we're talking about when we're talking about renewing our minds, resetting, fine-tuning the mind, and sometimes, when necessary, getting hit upside the head. <laughs> sometimes I need that, maybe you do too, but that's what we need for reset. Now, we don't do that today because we're in the digital age. So today, I'm not going to smack my MacBook Pro on the side because... For one thing, it costs more than my first car to get it, and uh, for another thing, it doesn't work to hit the digital things that way. So, when we reset, um, how many of you have had you know problem with your computer? You're trying to install something, you're trying to get your computer to do something, it won't do it, won't do it, won't do it, and then finally you hit restart, the computer restarts itself, and it works, whatever it is. I don't know why that is, I don't understand it, 
but I just know that, that it works. And so when we, in the digital age, when we want to, uh, when we want to reset, we, when we want to set, we do the restart. And so that's something also like what we do uh, with our minds. And so I think that, you know, speaking to a group of students, you guys primarily are, are probably in a better position to know how to set your minds, how to reset your minds than anybody. How many of you have a place that you know of that you have to go when you really need to focus, you really need to study, when you've got a cardiology test coming up like the MS2s did? How many of you have a place and a time that you know that you have to go when you really need to zero in and focus and tune everything else out? You guys got a place like that? Sure you do. You also have places that you know that you can't be if you really want to set your mind, if you really want to focus on the cardiology and get the stuff down that you need to learn for your test. There are places that you can't be. And so you know how to set your minds, and it's the same way uh, when we set our minds on, uh, when we're trying to set our minds on the things above. So, so the next time, for all of you guys, that you hit all the red lights, and the next time that your cell phone drops the call, or CMDA didn't serve what you wanted to have for lunch, or any of the other first world problems that, that we get into, I hope you'll remember this. I hope it'll be helpful to you. And I hope that you won't waste any more of the time and the energy and the attention that God has given you by focusing on first world problems, FWPs. First world problems are not problems, and we need to set our minds on things above and not on the earthly things. So let's do that as we close with a word of prayer today. <coughs> Heavenly Father, in ways that we can't understand, we come into your presence in a place like this, just a lecture hall, just uh, filled with students who hours ago were studying other things. But now it's a it's a sanctuary, and we are very much aware of your presence in this place. And when we bow our heads and close our eyes just to focus on you so that we can shut the other things out for a minute, we find your peace and we find your strength returning to us. We're reminded of your great love for us in a world where we are constantly judged and critiqued and measured against one another and against other groups. Uh, we find that uh, we are surrounded by your unconditional love and your grace, and it's a wonderful thing. Thank you for the great gift that you have given us in prayer. Thank you for helping us to be able to renew our minds to renew and to set our hearts and our minds on those things above so that we're not consumed by the things of the world. And, and Lord, I pray that none of us would waste another moment of the time and the energy and the attention that you have given us on these first world problems, these things that are insignificant and really don't matter. Help us to notice when we're doing it. Help us to turn that around and help us to uh, just turn our hearts and our minds and our attention to you and to give you the glory. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thanks, y'all.